In the history of mankind, the most inspiring chapters are those which deal with the birth of new nations. North America's history has such a chapter. The explorers who followed the pattern of river and mountain did more than open the doors of a continent. They left a record whose influences carried into the 20th century. This story is a portion of that record. The story of America is a tale often told. It speaks of courage, achievement, and sacrifice. It speaks of great cities and the circumstances which gave them birth and growth. It speaks of building and enterprise, the Panama Canal, and the Detroit Motor Revolution. There are tales of Chicago and Pittsburgh, Ogdensburg and Peoria, and tales of the great inland highways, the Mississippi, Illinois, and Ohio. There are stories, too, of wilderness penetrated and open for settlement, bayou, prairie, and forest. Tales of white cotton and black men from Africa to harvest it. Legends of grillwork cities and the men of iron who founded them. And romances of dark waterways and golden hills that beckoned explorer and trader. But these stories of lives gambled and empires gained, these sagas of America when it was young have one thing in common. They are stories of a single breed of men, men of one nationality, one religion, and one epoch. The men of New France who helped a continent to win its birthright. The mark of these cavaliers is deeply etched. Their achievements are perpetuated in the place names of two nations, Père Marquette, Duluth, La Salle, Champlain, Joliet, Dubuque, Cadillac, Duquesne, and Bienville. Their names have become the names of America. Whether they were missionaries, explorers, soldiers, traders, or colonists, the tide of history has linked these French Canadians with the first bloom of the New World. In terms of America, these men were the builders and first sons. They established a fort at Detroit. At St. Louis, they besieged the city while it was in the hands of the Spaniards. Mobile, Alabama and the colony of Louisiana were given birth from their zeal to build. New Orleans site was discovered on exploratory missions to the Gulf of Mexico. Pittsburgh started its long road to industrial fame as Fort Duquesne. From Gaspé to Martha's Vineyard, the entire seacoast was scanned and charted. Yes, they were giants in seven league boots, these men of New France. With Montreal and Quebec as headquarters, they strode from Hudson's Bay to Texas, 
from Maine to the Columbia, founding settlements, fighting wars, and teaching Indians the ways of white men. Today, after 300 years, their record still lives fresh and inspiring in their homeland, the French-Canadian province of Quebec. The countryside of Quebec has changed little with the years. It was an old country, even in the days of the Cour de Bois, the oldest in the world by geological standards. True, the forests have retreated from the rivers, and the settlements have long since become cities. But the zest for living and love of adventure are still close to the heart of French Canada. As you drive along the well-worn byways of the province, the roadside shrines make their appearance, those ancient and welcome resting places for the weary traveler. You will note the monuments to the past, the symbols that still exist of a heritage that was carved and created from bare rock and soil. As you approach the little towns, you will see the high church spires, those unmistakable signs of French-Canadian unity. If you are fortunate, you may witness a pilgrimage at St. Anne de Beaupre or a St. Jean-Baptiste parade. For Quebec shrines attract millions of people each year to seek cures or consolation. From the moment in 1534 that Jacques Cartier took possession of Canada by setting up a cross on the rugged Atlantic shore, the history of Quebec has been an equal effort between church and state. Quebec City, home of antiquity, the prize of old wars, and the fountainhead of New World Christianity. If North America has a history, then its destinies were cast in the fiery past of this ancient city. There is little to be said that will enrich the story held open to every eye. As you look upon the narrow cobbled streets and the gates of America's only walled city, it is better that you let your mind retrace the years. Look well at the ancient stone walls and the Norman towers, and remember the giants who once trod here. When the Puritans landed in Massachusetts Bay, the city of Quebec was already a quarter century old. When Pennsylvania was founded, La Salle was building Fort St. Louis, and Duluth was erecting Fort Detroit. The Jesuit fathers located missions at Green Bay 200 years before Wisconsin became a state. The entire province of Quebec was founded 13 full years before 1776, the Declaration of Independence. But it was not deeds alone that made these men great. They had vision and imagination. Atop Cape Diamond stands a statue of Samuel de Champlain. It is far from Cape Diamond to Panama, and further from Champlain's time to 1900, when the canal was built. But this man had the vision to recommend the Panama Canal in 1600, 300 years before completion.
To these men who followed the will of the wisp into the secret corners of a continent, Quebec was home. In the recesses of its parliament buildings, as in the recesses of its heart, Quebec has placed memorials to those who wander no more. In places where once the French trader bartered with Indians and the Grand Seigneur feasted his tenants, the keynote is still hospitality. It is the St. Lawrence River and its tributaries which provide different entertainment. Refreshing river cruises on the former battlegrounds of Red Men, Norse Rovers, and the British and French. Few people think of the East as rugged, but the Saguenay River, dominated by its statue of the Virgin Mary, the Madonna of the Capes, is a bold land more fitted for Western eyes. The inspiring capes of Trinity and Eternity dwarf the river steamer as it hugs their great rock faces. Looking up the narrow fjord-like river canyon, it is the passengers who feel that they are explorers, missionaries, and discoverers. Here, in this inspiring wilderness, in this wild setting of rock, tree, and white water lies the paradox of Quebec. Here, where the explorers saw beauty, engineers saw power. Here, where birch canoe first touched water, the water has become energy. So that today, the province of Quebec is power rich in a world hungering for cheap electrical power. From the Saguenay to Perse is several hundred miles, but greater than the distance is the change in the land, the people, and the customs. For the Gaspé coast breeds a race of men who accept the sea from birth as friend, enemy, and food larder. For the visitor, Percy is the stepping off place for nearby Bonaventure, the island of the Gannets. Passing the huge split rock of Percy, the origin of its name becomes evident. Percy is the French word for pierce. From the sea, the bird sanctuary of Bonaventure Island exhibits its whole lime-scarred face, its population of 20,000 gannets, gulls, and sea puffins. For the ornithologist, gannets are an interesting study. For the novice, the experience is a fascinating first-hand acquaintance with one of the few remaining natural bird sanctuaries. The village of Saint-Jean-Port-Joli has a special significance in the culture of Quebec. Its quaint little shops house artists with special qualifications, woodworkers whose hands have, by tradition and training, become highly skilled in the field of wood carving.
skilled hand arts are typical of the work done throughout the province. Whether the creations are inlaid copper, ceramic figures, hooked rugs, or wrought iron mantleware, the French-Canadian handicraft worker has long since shown his love for beauty. The children of the spinning wheels and hand looms are many and far spread. As Canada's greatest metropolis, Montreal is a vigorous and prosperous commercial center, deeply religious in background and observance. Although it is a home of heavy industry, it is also one of the world's great ports. Looking down at the stately tree-lined streets, how can one but feel a surge of pride in remembering the beginning? In 1642, this was a Sulpician mission colony of 44 people, a fort to preach the gospel and fight the Iroquois. The 44 grew, the fur traders came, and then the merchants. Suddenly, Montreal was a city. Beauty alone didn't come. The beauty was always there, felt and shown in the hearts of its people, as it was in the beginning. It is with commerce and industry that Montreal has sent its visiting car to the far corners of the earth. The evidence can be seen in the thrust and flow of goods and workmen, and the great ocean freighters stabled in their piers. But the real Montreal lies more deeply hidden. It must be sought in its most hallowed spots. There are ghosts in every breath of the city. This was the home of Diberville, Maisonelle, Jean Mance, Radisson, Grossier, Nicolet, Perrault. The dead were never more alive. For courage and achievement are things that even the ages cannot remove. They can only enshrine. the mark of the French Canadian lies across all America. His step was long and his heart was great. For some, it was the pure adventure of discovery. For others, it was beaver pelts. For those who carried faith into the wilderness, it was a place to dedicate new ideas and old values. Oremus, benedic Domine Jesu Christi, ham crucem, per quam repubesti mundum. With these words, a whole continent was given life. Today, the tide of exploration has turned. The land which sent its sons to discover America is in turn being rediscovered. The modern Cour de Bois uses a paved highway. His birch canoe has grown wheels. His equipment is a camera and picnic basket. But along the ancient byways of old Quebec, he will find precious records, the story of his beginnings. The names are now only pages in history. The rivers which spawned giants have long since loaned their waters to ships of commerce. But in the countryside of two nations, in the stone walls of great modern cities, there endures a conquering spirit. 
the spirit of the men of New France, who spun threads of greatness across the land which became America.